All right, so I'm not sure how many of you saw this, but last week, after Terry McAuliffe was defeated by Glenn Youngkin in Virginia's gubernatorial race, Tulsi Gabbard, a Democrat, took to Twitter to talk about how excited she was that Glenn Youngkin, the Republican, had won. She wrote this, McAuliffe's loss is a victory for all Americans. Why? Because it was a resounding rejection of efforts to divide us by race, the stripping of parental rights, and arrogant deaf leaders. This benefits us all. Now, what she's referring to is, of course, CRT, critical race theory. And she thinks it's divisive and it shouldn't be taught in schools. Well, I've got great news for you, Tulsi. It's not being taught in schools. CRT is a non-issue manufactured by a Republican operative in order to win over voters by exploiting white grievance. It's electoral strategy that she's falling for, hook, line, and sinker. And you don't have to take my word for it. Take the word of Christopher Rufo who's the operative who made this a mainstream issue, admitting in March that, yeah, we're going to make this the go-to issue and all of the culture war issues, we're going to put it under the brand of critical race theory. He said, we have successfully frozen their brand critical race theory into the public conversation and are steadily driving up negative perceptions. We will eventually turn it toxic as we put all of the various cultural insanities under that broad category. Now, she went on Fox News to further discuss why she was happy that the Republican won. And essentially, the host is going to bring up a criticism in particular of Joe Manchin made by Cori Bush. Now, the reason why he's citing this particular criticism is because it's something that Tulsi seemingly is against since she made this tweet. So Cori Bush is going to say that Joe Manchin, his lack of support for BBB, Build Back Better, is anti-black. And so since Tulsi Gabbard is presumably going to view this as the divisiveness that she supposedly hates because it's race baiting, it's unnecessarily invoking race when that's not necessary. Um, you know, she she should just like, she should be able to um, swat this aside. He's kind of teeing up an easy way for her to make her pitch. But she's going to take this in a really weird direction. And her criticism of Cori Bush is a wee bit stupid <laughs> so i don't even know how to set this up let's just watch i'd love your response it's such an important thing for everyone to see that this is the way some democrats speak this is cory bush okay representative cory bush speaking about jo a disagreement with joe manchin her colleague um on the spending bill this is how she put it joe manchin's opposition to the build back better act is anti-black anti-child anti-woman and anti-immigrant I saw that and I thought, honestly, like you can have legitimate disagreements over policy. You can. Yes. And, and so I, I want everyone to understand that what you're talking about is not some kumbaya, everyone's just get along and we don't disagree. Of course we disagree. Politics is about disagreement and, and who's got the best plan and so on. But you don't have to do it like that to call someone who you disagree anti-black, anti war I just couldn't believe that. It really just shows, again, that this is a symptom of uh, a deeper, um, a lack of a spiritual foundation, Steve, where if, if you're not able to see someone, regardless of party politics, regardless of your position, whether you agree or disagree, if you're not able to see another person as a child of God, as someone that you can respect at that fundamental level, as a, as a fellow American, then this is where we see all of this darkness uh, coming from. And, and so it's no wonder, as you were talking about the results in Virginia, uh, that people chose to respond positively towards that message of hope and optimism for our future, that message of coming together, that message of care and respect for all people. Uh, and, and this is, again, this is where, this is where I find hope uh, for our future. Uh, if we go back to those fundamental yes. values and principles of who we really are, uh, then this is, this is how we can come together. What a lovely platitude. Just beautiful words there. Love it. Now, for the record, um, I think that Cori Bush's criticism of Joe Manchin is not very persuasive. I don't doubt that Joe Manchin is anti-black, but he's not refusing to support Build Back Better specifically because he's anti-black. He's refusing to support Build Back Better because he's corrupt. He's taken millions of dollars from fossil fuel donors. And Cori Bush pointing that out, which is objectively true, I think would be a lot more persuasive to people. Because if you say that he's anti-black, he doesn't give a shit. But if you actually call out his donors, that's when you really shine a light 
on what his motivations are. So I think that there is a substantive critique to make of Cory Bush's criticism of Joe Manchin. Having said that, though, I think any and all criticisms of Joe Manchin are good because fuck Joe Manchin. But Tulsi Gabbard doesn't criticize the substance of Cory Bush's statement there. Here's why she's mad about what Cory Bush said about Joe Manchin. Uh, specifically, she doesn't like it because it speaks to a lack of a spiritual foundation. What? Uh, because if you're not able to see someone, in this instance, Joe Manchin, quote, as a child of God, as someone that you can respect at that fundamental level, as a fellow American, then this is where we see all of this darkness coming from. Okay, this is, one, incoherent, and two, deeply stupid. I don't believe in the religious dogma that you're peddling, so we're trying to talk about what's happening in the real world, not in the metaphysical or spiritual realm. So none of this means anything to me. And if we're actually going to take her seriously here, why is it that it's Cori Bush who lacks the spiritual foundation and not Joe Manchin? Why isn't the darkness emanating from him? who's denying his constituents' policies that they desperately need to survive. Why isn't he the one that isn't seeing that they're children of God? It's just, it's so stupid no matter how you spin this. Like what she's saying here, it's very clearly a shameless attempt to pander to evangelicals. And it's just, it's so embarrassing because she sounds silly. And this whole grift that she's doing where she's brought onto right-wing programs as the token Democrat isn't really persuasive if you literally just say the same things that Republicans say and you don't change anything. And if you look at the YouTube uh, video where the segment was posted, it talks about how Tulsi addresses the far left. Now, I don't know that that's her words, but I mean, she's being brought on to attack the far left. And what does she do? She sounds like fucking Franklin Graham as she criticizes Cori Bush. It's just, it's truly stupid. And the policies that Cori Bush is fighting for, these are things that she pretended to at least support at one point in time. But all of a sudden, since she is angry that Joe Manchin won't support these policies, she being Cori Bush, Tulsi Gabbard is saying, mm, you should see him as a child of God. Okay, well, how about this? No, fuck Joe Manchin. He's not a child of God. I'm sure that if God were real, he would reject Joe Manchin and send him straight to hell because he's a piece of shit who is literally helping to destroy our only habitable planet. Also, his fossil fuel donors can make more money. That's not a child of God. That's a child of fucking Satan or whatever the fuck you want to believe. So it's, it's just, it's truly nonsensical. And she adds, it's no wonder since you were talking about the results in Virginia that people chose to respond positively towards that message of hope and optimism for our future. Yes, because Glenn Youngkin essentially ran a campaign that in a nutshell uh, was CRT bad. And to her, she saw that and she thought, wow, this is so inspirational. This gives me so much optimism for the future. What about CRT bad is good? Like what inspirational message does that even have? Like, I'm trying to be somewhat charitable here, but that doesn't even make sense. That doesn't even make any sense. CRT is about banning basically any history that portrays America in a negative light in schools. Most people don't see CRT until they're in law school or graduate school, as was the case with me. So I don't know if they're trying to conflate history lessons with CRT. Either way, it doesn't matter because this isn't a real issue. It's not a real issue. It's a fake issue. It's a substance-free issue. But that's great for Tulsi Gabbard, who is not a very substantive politician or political commentator now. But either way, I mean, what she's doing here in pandering to evangelicals and suggesting that Cori Bush, of all people, even if you disagree with her criticism, is uh, lacking a spiritual foundation. Well, as I see it, Cori Bush hasn't sold her soul in order to make money. Joe Manchin has he sold out to the fossil fuel industry. Tulsi Gabbard sold out in order to make money by posting on Rumble, a right-wing website, bankrolled by billionaires. But apparently it's others who lack spiritual foundation. Mm, sounds like that's projection. It seems like if anyone lacks spiritual foundation, it's you, Tulsi Gabbard. But that doesn't actually even matter because spirits aren't real and you just sound like a stupid person. So, yeah.